Hi, Jonathan. My name is Paul Hendricks, and I'm a spokesperson for the Lung Cancer Foundation of America. I wanted to take the time to ask you some questions about the importance of screenings and um, your thoughts of uh, how easy screenings are with the technology today. Well, thank you, Paul. My name is Jonathan Valena Vargas. I'm a thoracic surgeon at Wild Cornell Medicine, also a surgeon scientist. I think that, um, you know, your first question is basically how important is screening, right? So screening is basically what's going to save the most lives compared to everything else. Um, the reason that that's the case is that it catches the cancers very early. And that is the best chance for cure for most patients. So if you take every single patient, if you screen every single patient and caught all the cancers early, you know, over 90% of the patients would be alive today. And that's why it's so important. Really? Wow, that's impressive. Um, how would you say the technology has become more safe now compared to before? You know, it was always pretty safe. It's mostly imaging based. Um, I think that the big distinction happened about 10 years ago. It used to be that you would just get an x-ray. You know, somebody that, you know, your, your doctor would think, oh, my patient's got a cough or maybe they um, smoked for a really long time. Let's just get an x-ray and make sure. Um, it happened very rarely. And uh, there was a big trial that showed, you know, maybe x-rays are not good enough. Um, so they started doing CAT scans on patients and then they compared CAT scans versus x-rays and showed that the CAT scans is much better at picking up early stage disease and the CAT scan is very safe. Sometimes people talk about radiation, but we actually do use a low dose radiation scan. It's incredibly safe for the patient. It takes about two minutes to do and it could potentially save a life. Wow, that's incredible. For a lung cancer spokesperson like myself, um, I want to try to inspire people to get early screenings. Is there anything you can tell me that would help me um, give someone um, more um, confidence and um, be more relaxed about getting a screening? You know, I think first of all, you do an incredible job. And I think any lung cancer patient or cancer patient in general that's taking their time to go out and, and speak about their experience or kind of um, inform patients um, about a specific cancer is an incredible thing that you've undertaken. So thank you for that. You know, I think that the most important thing is that uh, most patients don't even know what lung cancer screening is, right? Everybody knows about colonoscopies. Everybody knows about mammographies. It's on TV. You see it on every sitcom. Um, but very few people know actually about lung cancer screening. So the first thing you got to do is educate people. You know, you have to tell them this is the very... You know, there are very clear guidelines about who gets screened, right? If you're over 50, if you smoke for 20 packs, you know, 20 pack years or a pack a, a day for 20 years or more, and if you haven't quit in 15 years, you know, these are very kind of straightforward guidelines, but I don't think people know about lung cancer screening. And to be honest with you, a lot of doctors don't know about lung cancer screening. So we really have to make an effort to get the word out and just inform people this is a test that we do. Don't think of it as a big deal. It's like anything that you go and, you know, you get your PSA, you get your prostate exam, you get your colonoscopy, you get your mammography. This is just one other thing. So what you're saying is um, if you or someone you know have a history of smoking, then you should ask your primary care doctor to get a screening for lung cancer. Absolutely. Is there anything that um, a patient can do with informing their insurance company that will help facilitate them getting a screening. You know, it shouldn't be the patient being, a, you know, speaking directly to the insurance company. It should be the patient speaking to the doctor, the doctor ordering the test, and it should be covered. So it's up to the patient to talk to their primary care doctor and let their primary care doctor talk to the insurance company. Yes. So there is some areas in which you know a you don't actually meet the criteria for screening and those are kind of very rare and the doc it's up to the doctor's discretion so one of the things that i tell patients or i ask patients considering i'm a lung cancer surgeon is do you have any family history of lung cancer you know there's a lot of patients nowadays that are not smoking never smoked or very light smokers that don't actually meet the criteria but all these little things you know the more you know about your health your family's health 
uh, the more it kind of clues into the doctors whether you should get a CAT scan or not. Can you tell me how much easier it is on a patient to catch a, a early sign, early detection of cancer rather than to wait and then um, it become a more serious matter? So, you know, the reason that screening is so important is because the very, very early lung cancers don't have any symptoms, actually. And usually by the time they have symptoms, such as a cough, uh, weight loss, chest pain, that's when it's actually in a more advanced state. So, so screening is really for the patients that are higher risk with a smoking history before they have symptoms, when the cancer is very, very small. Now, if you already have symptoms, it's actually not called screening anymore. You should just go to your doctor and they should order a CAT scan right away. Um, but that's a little bit different. What would those symptoms be that would indicate to uh, an individual that there is something going on in their lungs? So the most common one is a persistent cough that just does not go away. Sometimes you have a little blood tinging in that cough. Sometimes you'll have chest pain. Even hoarseness of the voice is another common symptom for patients when they have lung cancer. So if you have any of these things that are kind of persisting, you know, they, they, should, they linger around more than they should, you should always alert your doctor to kind of do the full workup. So for someone who has a screening and cancer is detected, what are some of the more modern advances um, to a procedure that makes it easier for a patient today than before. You know, I'm a surgeon, so I see a lot of early stage disease. And I think there's been a lot of advancements in that. So, so the most important thing is to catch it early, which screening does. Then they'll come see me at the office or a pulmonologist. We may, you know, opt for a biopsy, which nowadays is very painless. And there's a lot of different modalities to do it. It's an outpatient thing. What they basically do is put a little needle into whatever suspicious nodule they may find. And that'll let us know whether it is truly a cancer or just a nodule. Right? Some people just have something we call benign nodules that are not cancer. The important thing is to figure out what it is. Once we do figure that out, the surgery itself nowadays is pretty straightforward and it's very well tolerated. You know, there's been a lot of advancements in minimally invasive surgery, meaning the robotic surgery, that surgery, uh, things that really a patient can go home the next day even after this procedure, after we remove the cancer if it is a cancer. So you're telling me that <clears throat> nowadays, it's so much easier for someone to get a screening. Uh, the chance of an early detection would mean that they could be treated and, uh, and it would almost be something as simple as feeling like it was outpatient. I think it's, you know, we progressed a lot, um, not only in catching these things early with imaging, but, you know, in how do we biopsy them and how we remove them. So, you know, compared to 20, 30 years ago, when it would be this big arduous process and things were caught a little later, now the modern way is much, much more straightforward for the patient. Um, so I think we've, you know, in early disease and early detection, we've advanced a ton. And, you know, the key is really to get the patient screened. Um, you know, only 6% of patients that should get screened, that, you know, actually get screened. So you're missing 94% of patients that should get screened that don't get screened, right? So you're missing a lot of patients because they either don't know or they're scared to. Wow, that's incredible. It um, makes it seem like in modern times, in today's times, it's so much easier to get a question answered by a quick screening and with the chance that if you do catch it early, the treatment is so much easier. No, absolutely. And, it, you know, one of the things that are less talked about is when you actually get the screening, you can actually catch other things. So things that we catch are things like coronary artery disease or, you know, diseases of the heart vessels. We'll catch emphysema or COPD or any sort of lung disease that you may have. So screening not only catches lung cancer, but it can actually help in other diseases as well. Oh, that sounds incredible. It really inspires me to want to go out there and use my voice to inform people, uh, get, your, get your screening, get a baseline so you know where you are. And uh, if you detect something, you can take care of it early. No, absolutely. And, you know, again, I thank you for 
getting your voice out. I think having somebody that's gone through the experience and looks as well as you do kind of calms people down, right? You're saying, hey, look, this happened to me. I got treated. I'm fine. That's really important. Hearing this information is really encouraging and definitely gives me more information to be able to talk to other cancer patients.